Thank you, Michael. I um, just want to thank everybody uh, on this call today for joining us. Um, you're going to find uh, that this, this uh, training today from uh, Daniel Gold, uh, who's president of Cushion Track, will be very, very informative. Uh, pretty excited about this product. Just wanted to give a quick rundown. Uh, most of you probably know who CBC America is. Um, uh, we're, we're actually part of the uh, of CBC Cor uh, Corporate Group, headquartered in Tokyo, Japan. And uh, right now we've got about 40 offices across the, uh, across the world, pretty large. Been in business actually, we're celebrating our 50th year this year. So we've been busy for, for quite a long time. Um, some might remember, as Michael said, as Chugai Boyeki. Uh, that was a name probably 15 years ago. Uh, but CBC America now is, is the name of the company group. Uh, again, products that are under the CBC umbrella would be uh, Cortrol, which is our VMS platform. The GANs product line, which is our cameras, recorders. Uh, we got uh, Cruiser Track, which we'll talk about today. And of course, you're all probably familiar with Computar, which is the lens line. Uh, not taking away from Daniel Gold, I'll introduce him right now. Daniel Gold, again, is the president of Cruiser Track. And uh, we should be very thankful having him on the call today. Daniel, take away. Thanks, Thanks Elliot and Michael. Appreciate the, uh, the introduction. Uh, hello to all of our attendees. I appreciate everyone taking the time today to, to join us and discuss a little bit about uh, about the Crucial Track product portfolio and, and kind of the biometric market um, as a whole. Um, I'm hopeful that everybody can see the uh, presentation screen and in my video, it seems like it's uh, working well so far. Um, yeah, I hope everybody's doing well. It's obviously, this is our new normal, right? Is standing in front of a, a few different screens and, and uh, a list of attendees rather than face-to-face, -face, but um, I'm hopeful that you know, we can have a productive discussion today um, a few notes. Um, there is a Q&A section uh, enabled in the Zoom. So I'll ask that if you have any questions as we're going through the, the initial part of the presentation, uh, just go ahead and type those in and, and we'll see if, uh, you know, we'll monitor them and, and Elliot will be able to, uh, you know, either, uh, either mark them or, or answer them in real time. Uh, and then as we get towards the, maybe the last 10 or 15 minutes of the hour, we can uh, have another discussion and, and answer some of those questions as well. So please feel free to uh, be interactive and and especially if there's anything that I kind of gloss over or you would like a little bit more detail on, please feel free to uh, you know raise that question and, and we'll have the discussion. So uh, first off the bat, um, crucial track, who are we? Um, we are a uh, biometric access control manufacturer, and we're relatively new. Um, we've been, been around since 2016 and, and in the market since 2017. So really, April 2017 was our launch into the market at ISC West. And um, we come from a, a larger technology group who's a kind of primary investor in, in uh, South Korea. And so they, uh, you know, they lend a lot of their... Uh, software support and, and development into our product line. So it's really helped us uh, grow and, and really catch up in a, in a very short order. Um, we are headquartered in Houston. So we're a US-based company. We have uh, sales, service, and support all based out of Houston. Um, and we do um, regular trainings, both for, from a sales perspective and from a product perspective um, from that Houston office. So uh, now everything's remote, a lot, lot easier to travel to. Uh, just, you know, walk right downstairs to the kitchen counter or, or uh, the couch, wherever you uh, typically take meetings these days. And then we also have our, uh, all of our product is, is manufactured uh, out of our office in Korea. All right, so a little bit about uh, biometrics in general. And typically this, uh, this slide is a little later in the presentation, but I think it's a lot more uh, pertinent now. And we talk about when is the time for biometrics? And you know, one of the first things that, that jumped out at me when we were at our, our first day at ISC West uh, in our first year was that everybody, uh, you know, um, somebody who I've known for a while made the comment to me that you know, everybody has a story about biometrics and it's not a new technology, right? The promise of biometrics has been around for, for a while. And at the time, it was, you know, the new promise, it was kind of another wave of biometrics and, and, you know, products out in the market. And it's been growing and gaining momentum. I mean, you know, facial recognition is in the news on a daily basis these days. But um, now that we talk about the situation we're in now with uh, 
the need for contactless solutions and really putting together solutions in this new world in which companies are desperately trying to uh, get back and return to work or uh, create a safe work environment. Um, biometrics really at this point are, are uh, you know, right at the forefront of those types of solutions. Um, so many, you know, the common phrase I'm hearing now is RTO, return to office. So what can biometrics offer as part of that RTO solution? Um, the first thing we talk about with Crucial Track um, is completely non-contact non solution. So this isn't, you know, the days of old where you're placing a, a fingerprint, uh, you know, your finger on a reader or you're, uh, you know, making contact to have your iris or your retina scanned. Um, everything that, every product that Crucial Track has is 100% touchless. So we're doing um, all of the authentication um, from a distance, uh, requires no type of uh, touch or contact at all. Obviously that's critical at this point. Um, from a security perspective, uh, you know, we're talking about with everything being a lot more remote, we're having, you know, administration and security offices actually be more distributed and, and less on premises at the time. So being able to physically hand out credentials, whether they're RFID cards, um, key fobs, whatever it would be, um, you know, it's, it's not going to be uh, kind of as straightforward as it used to be. And so we're looking at more dynamic approaches to how we quote unquote onboard users into the, uh, into the security system. Uh, and then another thing we talk about is, is kind of efficiency and accuracy, right? So from a security perspective, obviously RFID cards are vulnerable. They can be lost, they can be stolen, they can be copied. And that gives you no visibility on, on which user is actually using them, just what credential they're holding. Um, with biometrics, that's obviously not the case. Um, we can be very accurate just using a single biometric, um, but we can be extraordinarily accurate using multi-factor authentication. So either multi-biometrics or the combination of biometrics plus a card. And we then talk about um, speed, efficiency, accuracy. So uh, for those of you that use Clear at the airport, I think that's kind of one of the more common examples these days. Uh, you know, they're going to face some hurdles uh, in the return because their primary method was uh, fingerprint. And one of the things about that fingerprint was, A, you had to touch something, um, and B, it was kind of a cumbersome, you know, long authentication period. So, you know, it takes, I don't know, two, three, four seconds um, of having that fingerprint contacted to the, to the device to actually gain an identification on a user. Um, as you'll see as we go through Crucial Track offers a product line that um, really has authentication in, in under one second in most cases. And so we're really kind of not, not only taking the actual physical contact out of the solution, but actually the friction of using that and, and how the user experience is perceived by you know, the day-to-day -day users. So as we talk about Biometrics as a whole, we talk about, you know, where are the type of applications that we're looking at for these types of solutions? Um, you know, obviously, we're not going to replace every card reader in the world with a biometric uh, reader anytime soon. Um, you know, there are a lot of factors that come into play that would prohibit that. But what we're looking for is we're looking for opportunities in which we're gaining a lot of traction and really seeing a lot of high adoption rates for biometrics. And, and there are two two specific markets at the moment that are really jumping off. Uh, and then a third one, which has been, has been uh, in increasing exponentially over the last say 18 months. Um, so what we talk about in a, in a COVID world is the two main opportunities are really um, commercial buildings. And you know, I already touched on the return to office is how can we get users and employees back into an office? And uh, I'm sure every single one of you on this call has, has been on you know, Zooms and conference calls over the last few months where uh, building owners, tenants, uh, business owners are desperate to get their employees back and are looking about what, how do we put together solutions that are gonna allow us to do that, right? And so while biometrics is not, it's not a one shot kill, um, it is a big part of that solution to allow users back into the office. Um, so having that, that contactless, um, frictionless solution is, is going to be a big piece of that. Um, the other one 
is is kind of obvious, but it's healthcare, right? Um, healthcare again, um, we have a really kind of dense popular uh, dense environment in which uh, you know you have users, you have doctors, you have nurses who um, are are you know we're all on high alert, but they're on the highest alert at the moment. And so having the ability to provide access to ICUs, to operating rooms, to emergency rooms, to the pharmacy within any healthcare facility, um, those are areas in which it's really critical that we have higher uh, authenticity and accuracy rate uh, than kind of just your standard, you know, lock or, or RFID card, um, but also having that be completely touchless. So we're, you know, not using anything physical to allow access uh, to those to those parts of healthcare facilities. Um, and then lastly, something that, uh, you know, is, I, I would say probably not as affected by our current situation, but um, any type of data type environment is, is really looking, they're all looking uh, very interested in um, biometrics and specifically with the ability to do multi-factor or two-factor authentication. And as we get into the, the Crucial Track offering uh, shortly here, you'll see that uh, we really hit a sweet spot in that, in that area, which is that we have the ability to do uh, multi-biometrics and then biometrics plus card. And so in a, in a data capacity, um, so for protecting data centers, IDF closets, server rooms, um, we, we can uh, seamlessly fit right in and provide a full solution um, out of the box. <clears throat> So as we get into Crucial Track, uh, who we are and what we are, um, we have our, 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 our foundation, as we talked about um, from, from about four years ago, um, was really to focus on, on, on a relatively narrow aspect of, of the security industry. And it was um, manufacturing biometric solutions specifically for access control. So we're not doing, um, you know, a very common question and distinction to make these days is uh, the difference between facial recognition for really identification for access um, versus just uh, general AI um, that would sit, you know, on a CCTV system. So we do not, uh, we do not really deploy AI that is just scanning a scene looking for uh, to find, you know, every individual walking through that scene. We are specifically uh, designed to be an access point or an identification point um, in which the user is presenting a single or multiple biometrics uh, to be able to be identified and, and really gain access. So, uh, you know, we're very focused on that, that kind of singular part within access control. So you'll see throughout the presentation, we have uh, BACS, which is effectively our, our biometric access control uh, product line. And there are various models that fit underneath that. And then we also have uh, some kind of per uh, uh, peripheral devices that, that sit alongside the access control portion. So we've recently deployed a automotive telematic solution uh, called our Fleet Glance. Um, we have our smart door, which is an all-in-one door with biometric authentication built in. Uh, and then we do have a turnstile line as well. Um, so we'll, we'll go through and, and talk about how the turnstiles are designed to uh, integrate seamlessly with you know, lobby access. So from the beginning, we developed um, four separate technologies that are uh, part of our entire product line. So Crucial Track, we do all four, we do palm vein and fingerprint uh, recognition, and both of those are completely touchless again. So uh, you imagine you're holding your hand a few inches from the device uh, and we're able to authenticate, you know, finger and, and palm vein without uh, physically touching anything. And then we do also do facial recognition and iris recognition. So a few things specifically uh, about how Crucial Track stands out. Um, you know, we've been to three ISC West now and, and we've actually received awards for the new product showcase uh, at two of those three, uh, including our first one, which we, which we presented our core flagship mo uh, model called the Quattro and actually won the best overall uh, award for the new product showcase. So year one, right out of the gate, uh, we were kind of validated on, on two things. The first was that the industry and the market was ready, right? Everybody identified that, 
that biometrics was was kind of the hot technology at the time, uh, and two that we were going down the right path. Right, we had we had created something in which there was a lot of a lot of demand and a lot of interest in. Uh, we talk about a robust product offering, so we have varying models uh, that kind of are, are designed and tailored to fit, to fit various uh, applications. Um, again, completely touchless uh, with multiple biometrics and then very fast processing. And then another thing as we, as we talk about as we get into the architecture and the design and the deployment, um, it's a very scalable solution, right? So we recognizing that, uh, you know, we are not going to, or nor do we want to unseat the existing access control system. Um, we want to really slide in and be a part and a complement of that existing system. So we talked about uh, the batch product line and, and we'll go through a quick video here and, and kind of some more detail. Um, we do have our backend software that is um, really primarily designed for the, the secure um, storage and deployment of the biometric templates and designed to be integrated with, again, access control systems and, and various other uh, third-party software applications. We have our fleet glance. Uh, which is the automotive solution. Um, and then something that's a really becoming a critical component of our, of our uh, product offering is the visitor management system. And this is, this is actually something that's, that's really cool. And it's something that we've um, recently deployed at, at a few really large uh, building sites. And what our visitor management system allows um, from a primary perspective is the ability to enroll users uh, remotely. So from a visitor standpoint, um, you know, really minimizing that transaction time when the, when the visitor shows up on premises, allowing all of the pre-registration and the biometric enrollment to happen uh, before that point. Uh, and then lastly, again, our, our speed gates. Okay, so a few of, uh, of the details of the core BAX product line. So we have our BAX Quattro. Um, this was our first product, one new product showcased at ISC West. Uh, and this, this singular device actually incorporates all four biometric modalities. So face, iris, palm vein, fingerprint, all on a single device. Um, it's kind of lovingly referred to as the bowling ball uh, because of the way it, the rough size and the the uh, fingerprint holes kind of look like uh, the holes in a bowling ball. So uh, that's, that's its uh, unofficial nickname. But this product is really designed as a turnstile application. That's, that's the main, you know, the majority of deployments that are out there. You have the Quattro um, deployed on a turnstile and it's recognizing up to four different biometric modalities um, simultaneously. Uh, the Duo, the Duo is really the workhorse of the product line, um, just based on footprint and functionality. So the Duo has um, facial recognition, uh, touchless palm vein, and then there's also a built-in RFID reader into the device. And so this allows us to do that two-factor authentication I was talking about, you know, all, all self-contained in a single device, um, and really uh, lightning quick facial recognition and palm vein recognition. So uh, I would say the, the majority of our deployments are, are utilizing the Duo uh, in the majority of the, the locations. So we also have, uh, from a smaller footprint size, we have the Solo, which does palm vein and RFID. So still the ability to uh, have two-factor authentication um, in a smaller footprint. We have the tube. So the tube is a it's kind of a unique device. Um, it does iris and facial recognition. Um, but if you can see from that image, it's it's mounted on top of a monitor. And so the tube was initially designed as a as a solution for factory automation equipment, uh, allowing uh, very quick and accurate identification for users uh, working on factory automation machines. Um, allows them to log in without having to enter a password or swipe a card and uh, obviously designed with face and iris because those, those workers are typically wearing gloves. So giving that two-factor 
or two modality identification um, for, for the facial features. Uh, and then the last is as, as part of the main ecosystem, we have our enroll station. So this enroll station is uh, kind of designed as an enrollment kiosk. Uh, it has uh, capture points for all four of the biometrics um, in addition to being, you know, kind of a mini PC with a, with a monitor built in. So it's, a, it's really an all-in-one enrollment point um, designed for, for larger systems and larger deployments. Um, it's worth noting that uh, all of the product line that you see here on the screen, they do have the ability to enroll users directly from the device as well. So the enrollment station, not required, but uh, definitely something that is, uh, provides a large convenience for the bigger deployments. So quick uh, kind of run through of, of just the, the product in, in use. So what we'll see here is we have the both Quattro and Duo on display. Let me just turn this down a little bit. So the first one, this is, I mentioned the Quattro that mounted on the turnstile, right? And um, you'll see that most of these uh, are set to single mode. So whichever of the biometrics that are identified first um, is going to provide access at that point. Uh, so a couple of key details. The one is each device within the system can be configured for any set of circumstances. So if we have the turnstiles being a single factor only requiring one biometric, you can then have this device, uh, you know, leading into this main office on the inside require a multi biometric to be authenticated. So each of these users using uh, prior to that using two face and palm. And you'll see for all of these, these dual authentication there, you know, the face is, uh, authenticating typically in you know half of a second maybe uh, and then the palm vein is really just um, once the user you know holds the hand up to the palm vein sensor that's another maybe half second so typically able to get uh, at least dual mode uh, in under a second which again that that frictionless experience from the user perspective uh, is, re is really positive So Genie here is actually authenticating all four, um, which is, again, is typically overkill. Uh, you know, once you have two of the biometric authenticated, you're, you know, you're running to 99 point, you know, five or six nines uh, accuracy. So a couple things to point out about that. During that video, uh, there were monitors on display for each of the readers. Um, that's completely an option. So each of the readers have the ability to have a display output. They can be mounted with or without that display output at the actual uh, entrance location. And as I mentioned, right, something that it's very scalable. So uh, you know we've done a lot of deployments where they they'll begin with you know three or four readers at really critical locations. Um, they're starting to get their users enrolled and, and be able to secure those locations. And <clears throat> as, as it grows and as they become more comfortable and familiar with, with the technology, you know, you can add on, you know, readers here and there just to replace single, single RFID readers at specific locations. So one, one critical component about the architecture and, and how crucial track, um, deploy systems. A lot of, if any of you are familiar with, you know, facial recognition uh, kind of as a whole, um, there's typically a lot of processing done on the back end. So whether that's server side or, or utilizing GPU to do the, the identification, um, our, our devices all authenticate at the edge. So those readers, the Quattro, the Duo that you just saw in the video, they actually have a secure connection with this database server, which we call CRUAMS. And they have a copy of the user templates um, out there at the edge, typically, that they're able to identify 
and, and process um, without having to utilize the network, without having to go back to a server. So it's a very lightweight architecture on the back end. There's really a singular server or even a singular uh, virtual machine that would host our software. Uh, and the only other hardware that exists would be the readers themselves. Uh, so this allows us to be relatively network uh, redundant in the case of any type of you know slow or, or down network conditions, we're still operating uh, at full capacity for identification. Uh, and then additionally, um, you know, very lightweight on the hardware requirements from the server side as well. So the main the main purpose of the software, uh, again, to integrate with the existing access systems so that we have a you know a seamless uh, user experience, user database. Um, and again, we're really just controlling the, the, the biometric templates. Uh, all of the access is actually happening through the access control system. Uh, we also provide you know, monitoring logs that we can pass through to access control um, and user management. Uh, and then we do have a few modules outside of your typical access control so we can do time and attendance. Um, we've done meal plan management at, at university campuses. Uh, and then, I, as I mentioned, our, our visitor management platform, um, which allows for that remote enrollment. Um, oh, and there's one, one thing I probably glossed over that, but um, all of these devices communicate via Weekend, and the majority uh, also uh, the Quattro, Duo, and Solo uh, utilize OSDP as well. So from a uh, communication standpoint back through access control. Um, those are the main two methods that we're using. The, the actual, um, you know, database management of syncing users <coughs> and user IDs, that's happening uh, through the software. Um, so this is a quick overview of our visitor management platform. That's me well before uh, the quarantine uh, hair and beard uh, set in. But this is, the, this is our vision management platform. So it's cloud managed. Um, it has a uh, communication into our main database software. So it allows you to um, keep, it all, keep all the, the user templates synced. But effectively what the visitor management allows for is if I have, if I have Michael come in to visit me um, you know, tomorrow, I can pre-enroll him using his, his, just his name, the, the time of the meeting and the time he should have access. And uh, I, we can then send him an invitation uh, via phone or email. So it's either sent through text or email and it will provide a QR code to him that we can use with the readers. Um, and it will also provide him a link to upload a facial picture as you saw in that video. Um, and that will actually go right into the system. And, and then it will allow him to effectively show up and already be enrolled. So he can check in at the front desk. And again, it's a real, relatively frictionless process. There's, there's no need for him to enroll or enter his name or, or anything along those lines. He's, he's completely pre-enrolled. And really the, 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 the beginning of this process uh, happened because when we were deploying in some commercial, larger commercial buildings, we, you know, getting the employees enrolled and onboarded, that's not really a big problem. But, uh, you know, they're saying that we have buildings saying they have, you know, 500 to 1,000 visitors per day. Uh, you can't afford to have each of them, you know, stop and, and enroll their face and their palm vein, uh, you know, just so they can uh, go about the building. And so we designed this, this visitor management platform so that they can actually be pre-enrolled and, and really skip the desk completely if that's part of the, the procedure. Um, so really, you know, reducing the current time where they have to hand in their, their driver's license and, and actually get a printed badge. Okay, so moving through, um, we talk about, this is a, a really, really cool solution that we've developed uh, over the last few years. Um, it's called our Fleet Glance. It won, again, it won an award at ISC West last year in the new product showcase. 
And what Fleet Glance is, is it's a full telematic solution for vehicles and fleets. And it, it provides um, you know, facial recognition uh, plus QR code recognition. But then it also integrates um, dash cam facing in both directions, so into the vehicle and out through the front windshield. Um, it's got a GPS and LTE connectivity, so it allows for real-time tracking through our, our driver management platform of each vehicle in the fleet and for that driver management software to also be alerted if there's any type of, you know, an accident, a harsh braking event, um, if the driver has been driving on shift for too long, um, or uh, it actually has the ability to do drowsiness detection in which the, the driver, you know, if they, their head is tilted down, if their eyes are closed, that device can actually uh, report that back um, and allow for, you know, the, the operations center to reach out and, uh, um, you know, make contact with the driver to make sure that everything's okay. So one of the great things about this fleet glance is it's, it actually seamlessly integrates with the rest of our solution. So if we talk about, you know, certain situations, we've, um, we've talked with some police departments, we've talked with some actual uh, Silicon Valley based companies who are looking at the, the biometric readers for access to the buildings, but then also to utilize fleet glance uh, within that same ecosystem uh, for their fleet of vehicles. And whether that's, you know, to, to shuttle their employees around or whether that's for uh, freight, um, you know, this is something that fits right in. It's not a, you know, disparate solution that, that's, uh, you know, completely separated. It's, it's seamlessly integrated with, with the rest of the ecosystem. This is a little explainer video we got for it. The use of biometric identification offers a level of security that traditional keys fail to provide. Introducing Bax Fleet Glance, a biometric authentication solution for use in commercial vehicles. Fleet Glance is a rear view mirror with internal facing recognition technology, which verifies a driver's identity with just a glance. Fleet Glance operates along with Crucial Track's driver management system. This powerful software manages time and attendance, real time location tracking, and event monitoring. Yep, looks like we lost that. Hmm. Monitoring and reporting. There we go. An integrated dual facing dash cam provides video monitoring of both the exterior and interior of the vehicle, providing full visibility of harsh driving events. Real time reporting between the vehicle and operations center allows for monitoring of events through the driver management system. From a few vehicles to a large fleet, Fleet Glance and the driver management system are designed to scale with you. Backs. We give you the green light. Learn more and visit our website today. So quick overview, I think I probably could have just played that and not even gone through the intro because it's said all the same things, but uh, with a lot more information. So this, this video is available. I saw that somebody asked about the product presentation. Uh, in the product presentation that we can provide, there's there's links to all of these videos and the explainers to give to give those really quick, you know, one minute overviews of of each of the solutions. All right, so so rounding out the uh, product solution as we're uh, getting towards the end here, uh, something I mentioned at the beginning, um, kind of our our newest uh, product uh, portfolio is the smart door solution. And everything we've talked about to this point has really been focused on kind of commercial applications, right? Uh, the, the smart door is the first one that's really designed in a, in a residential type capacity and, and, and taking into mind a lot of the IoT considerations that you would want in a home that, that might not be as, you know, as much of a requirement or, or a desired function uh, in a commercial sense. So the smart door, um, really is incorporating the exact same functionality and components as, as the Duo would. So we have facial recognition, palm vein, RFID card. 
those are those are kind of a standard of, of across the product line. Um, but then it also includes uh, so a QR code, so a QR code that can be generated and and set to expire, right? For maybe a temporary delivery, um, somebody coming into you know service service the the unit or the home, um, and then also a pin pad. Uh, and then in addition to the 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 readers themselves you know there's uh, intelligence built in so there's smoke sensors and you can provide an alarm um, the door is is you know fire fire resistant and smoke proof uh, it also has the ability to do um, you provide an internal display on some of the models so you can actually see uh, from the inside who's out front of the door if you have a doorbell alert or if you have uh, you know some type of package delivered uh, and then the ability to remotely control that through through a web application or through an app on the phone. Um, so again, the door is really full scale solution um, designed designed for you know uh, typically condos, apartments, um, you know any type of residential application on the high end. Um, and then the back suite. So the back suite is rather than it being a full door solution, um, it's a it's a recessed. Um, biometric reader. So it's hard to tell from maybe that image, but <clears throat> that's inset uh, into a wall rather than being a device that is that is mounted externally on the wall. Uh, really just kind of gives a, a nice, nicer aesthetic. Uh, you know, there are trim, trim options available to, to blend it into the environment. Uh, and then if we, we look over here on the next one, so these are uh, kind of some of the pedestal mounts or outdoor applications that we have for, for that back suite as well. Okay, and then uh, really rounding out the product line, um, we do have our speed track turnstiles. Uh, for if you know you you may have uh, remembered that robo arm device on the right there from from ISC West, it's a kind of an unforgettable uh, turnstile. But these are our two two core models of turnstiles. So we have our slim swing, which is a uh, a very slim. It's about three inches wide for the towers. Um, and then it's got a, a swinging panel and bi-directional. Um, and then we have, you know, it can be configured based on, on width, uh, what to be ADA compliant. Uh, it's got very fast throughput. So we're talking, you know, 25 to 30 people per minute. And then it has all of the, the core safety features built in. So um, we have tailgate sensor, we have sensors inside of the lane to make sure that the, the, the gates don't close on anyone. Um, and then remote management through um, controllers as well. So each of our each of our turnstiles uh, are really designed to work seamlessly with the biometric piece, um, but they're also you know they can work with the standard RFID reader. There are um, all of this the standard uh, kind of mounting options to mount a, a reader on the inside of the gate, and and then to be able to communicate back with uh, building access control, building fire systems. Uh, and then lastly, I, I like to just show this and just to kind of have a quick visualization of, of how Crucial Track and the biometric uh, readers sit uh, within an ecosystem, right? Because like I said, we're not, you're not going in and you're not ripping out building access just to get these biometric readers in. Um, the idea is that we're sitting there as a component of that, that overall uh, security ecosystem. So it's, it's key to note, you know, one that, the readers are typically uh, communicating with access control via Wiegand or OSDP, and, and the access control is continuing to uh, make that determination on whether that door or turnstile opens or closes, uh, just as it would if it were an RFID reader. So there's really no difference in how access control is dealing with the, uh, the biometric piece. Uh, all of the biometric you know, identification and verification is happening on, on the crucial track side, and, and then um, we're just reporting that user <clears throat> has been identified uh, to the access control system. Uh, and then one other key component is that uh, both the readers and the, the server are gonna sit uh, you know, on the network for communication. So that's kind of the one difference between your standard RFID uh, architecture and the biometric piece is that that network component will come into play 
um, so that we can communicate uh, back to the server in real time about you know new users who have been added or users who have been deleted. Um, so that's that's when we you know when we get down into the design phase of it, that's the one thing that we like to point out because that's a certainly a consideration, certainly critical to how the systems are deployed. Uh, and so with that, that's a, a quick uh, overview of Crucial Track and and the the biometric piece. Um, I see that we've had had a few questions in here. So what I'll do right now is I'll I'll turn it over to um, Larry Borghese. Uh, he's got a he has a, an announcement and a few things he wants to share, and then we'll circle back and and kind of get into the Q and A portion and answer some of the questions that we couldn't before. All right, thank you, Daniel. Uh, yeah, what I'd like to talk about uh, is a new service that ADI is offering. Uh, my name is Larry Borghese. I'm responsible for global learning and development. And we recently introduced our uh, customer learning portal, which is titled ADI Academy. If you're on our website, you'll see that there's a couple of places where you'll find links for ADI Academy. And when you click on that, it'll take you over to our main page. And so really what's a uh, involved in ADI Academy. It's an online learning portal. Again, it was in introduced in May. And, you know, we've got a variety of different types of courses that are available, uh, access control, IP video, networking. Uh, you know, if I click on the course catalog here, you know, you'll see that, you know, there's a whole list of different other topical areas and product categories uh, that you could select from. And then there's a host of different courses available for each of these particular areas as well. And so many of these courses do carry continuing education units uh, with uh, various different states. Uh, included with ADI Academy uh, is the compliance management system, which allows you to track uh, your continuing education units. So if you need to maintain state licensing or other industry certifications, uh, we have a lot of those preloaded into the system and you can manually track uh, all of that information here so that you can keep tabs on your progress with maintaining your credentials. Uh, we're currently offering a 60 day free trial uh, to ADI Academy. And when you click on the get started button here, you'll have a choice of selecting from three bundles, uh, access control, IP networking or IP video. Uh, each of these comes with a range of anywhere from five to six courses. And again, those would be free to you for 60 days as a part of a trial membership. The trial uh, is available through the end of July. Um, and so at the end of this month, uh, we'll be discontinuing that particular offering. In addition to that, uh, you also have the available option of subscribing for the annual subscription. What this does is for $250 per year, it gives you access to all of the courses that are available uh, in, our, in our current catalog. So that's roughly uh, 150 hours of content that's available across all of those different uh, product categories. All right. Uh, that was really it. Uh, if, at this point, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you, Daniel, or to Mike, uh, to take on some questions related to um, the topic at hand. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Mike, did you have anything you want to say, or should we dive into the, the Q&A portion here? No, the only thing I would say is if you have questions, please put them in the Q&A. And Daniel, it appears that there's also one question in the chat box. Okay, let me, let me pull up that chat box. So I'll get to the Q and A portion first, just cause I think uh, Elliot, I think got to, got to most of those, but the one yeah. thing, so, so what I will say, uh, and Elliot, Elliot covered, uh, none of the equipment manufactured in China, everything is manufactured in, in the Korea, in Korea, um, you know, at our, at our facilities based outside of Seoul. Um, so we, we do have, uh, we can provide a certificate of origin if that's a requirement, um, but certainly nothing, nothing from China. The, uh, and one good question, and as, as, as Larry was talking, I was reading through this and, and realized I probably, uh, you know, skipped through this uh, a little quickly. So I'll, I'll take the time now to address it. Um, so the question was regarding outside entry solutions. And, um, 
you know, for those of you who are familiar with biometrics, you probably realize that it's, uh, there are a lot of considerations to take into play for the outdoor solutions. And I'll take it back even a step further and say that, you know, part of the reason that we have the, the ability and, and that, that we, we designed this multi-biometric solution, you know, one is from a security perspective, because that multi-biometric um, allows you to layer biometric modalities. And, and we're not just doing facial recognition, which, you know, can have some accuracy issues um, from, a, from a, when you're talking about trying to identify someone from a database of 10,000 users. Um, we also have the ability to then uh, confirm that identity with a secondary biometric. Um, but really the other reason, and I, I kind of always talk about the, the scale between security and convenience. Um, the other reason that we'll, we have multi-biometrics built into most of the devices is it because it gives the user um, really the choice on how they interact with the device. And so if we're doing single mode authentication um, at, a, at a specific reader. So if it's the, you know, the, the vestibule to get into the lobby maybe where it, it might be a, a little less of a secure of a, of a device or maybe getting into a break room, um, the, the user has the ability to choose whether they use face or whether they use palm uh, at that reader. And um, for whatever reason, based on how it's positioned in the hallway or, or the lighting conditions or, or just the user themselves, they might, you know, each user might kind of interact with that differently. So as we then kind of transition that to the outdoor solution, um, lighting is a huge factor with facial recognition. Um, you know, wh whether you're doing optical or infrared or a combination of the both, um, really, you know, indoors we can control that lighting a lot better. Uh, outdoor with the sun and the time of day, um, again, that's, that's, a, that's something that has to be really factored in. And so one of the things that we can do is we, that outdoor unit that we have available does have facial recognition and uh, <clears throat> that can actually kind of be, um, the settings can be calibrated slightly to adjust for how it's positioned and where it's located. Um, but then we also have the palm vein sensor, which is utilizing IR technology to, to uh, if you're not familiar with it, um, to read the vein pattern uh, inside of the palm. And so that is a, it's a, it's a lot less susceptible to very various lighting conditions. So in the sense that we have a really severe uh, light, whether it's the sun setting or rising on the horizon, or whether if, if it's a, um, you know, security lighting, um, if that's causing trouble with the facial recognition, you also have the ability to utilize palm vein. Um, and it's going to give a lot more consistent result in that type of environment. 